F yeah, guys. Slick and professional, 2019. 2019, we're jumping in. All right, guys, this is, uh, I I guess this is like the inaugural Dad Bod D&D Presents One-Shots. Like, we've done One-Shots in the past, but this is kind of the new the new format. We're starting on a, a Monday. Uh, these will happen every two weeks or so. What do you got, Bob? You chiming in? You're blocking out. Okay. You gave me the <laughs> hand, uh, stop talking, and I listen. Uh, but anyways, we're Dad Bod D&D. This is uh, our Monday night One-Shot uh, here we are. We're going to play Bard's Gate, the Riot Act. This is a Frog Gods... Frog God? Frog God singular games. Oops, let me take that off of there. Uh, this is a published one-shot. This came in the RPG crate a while ago. We're going to go ahead and run through this for the group tonight. I'll be DMing. You can find us anywhere on the internet at Dead by d, &D. Uh, Just check us out. Discord link down below. Skull Splitter link down below. Because, yeah, we're we're sponsored. Uh, we got a little merch down there. You know, you want to get yourself a dad bod shirt, uh, cup. I mean, do it. All the kids have, except you. Uh, get there. Uh, we do a podcast on Thursday nights. We do, uh, we're currently six episodes into our Waterdeep uh, campaign, uh, Dragon Heist, and we're loving the heck out of that. On uh, Friday nights. Oh, for, did I say Friday? Friday nights. You didn't. That's what I did. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, but like I said, this is kind of the new the new venture for Dad Bod D and D. We are starting these Monday one shots. Uh, like I said, twice a month we're hoping, and, and bringing in people from the community to come in and play with us and and have a good time. So I think with that we should jump into some some introductions from the uh, from everybody. I'll start with uh, uh, Bob. We'll start with you, and then we'll, we'll kind of go around the horn. We'll go Bob, Brittany, Devin, Travis, Kylie, cool, and cool, then cool, uh, cool, cool. then I'll jump in. So, Bob, let tell me your name, your real name, where we can find you on the internet, uh, and then I want to know your character's name, race, class, and a brief little bio. It's racist. Um, no, I'm Bob. I'm the DM for Dad Bod D&D Waterdeep Sessions. Um, you can find me at BillyZ6219 or just I main the I main the Dad Bod handle, so Dad Bod D&D. That's what I usually use, I don't use the other one very often. Tonight I'll be playing Scratch, who is a human a monk and a baker. What's up? Human monk baker. He him. He, human he monk him. baker. All right. Okay, Brittany, tell us about a little bit about yourself and then about your uh, your alter self here for okay. Bard's Gate. Awesome, my name's Brittany. I am boring, apparently, because I can't <laughs> think of anything to say. Um, <laughs> I, you can find me at TM Freelance, at TM Freelance on uh, Twitter, or my website, TM Freelancer. TM Freelancer was taken on Twitter. So <laughs> um, if you own TM Freelance on Twitter, please give it to me. Um, <laughs> my character is Lyra Lyons, the lyrist, and um, she's a human bard. And I use she, her pronouns. Beautiful. All right. Any anything else you about Lyra? She uh, she scowls a lot and she's very French. <laughs> so prepare for that and prepare for my my French accent. If there's anybody French out there, I'm very sorry for what's happening. Perfect. All right, Devin. <clears throat> uh, I'm Devin. I am found at at I'm found at at it's Devmax I T S Devmax. Uh, trying to make a concerted effort to actually use a Twitter. Um, so. Yeah, follow me. Um, tonight I will be playing uh, Dunkirk Brasper. Uh, he's a former contractor, and uh, he's now taking up a second career. He's going back to school to be a wizard. And awesome. oh, oh, and I'm I'm a healed dwarf. Beautiful. Thanks, Devin. All right, uh, Travis Blue Viper A one three eighty five. No, it's Knows just Travis and it's Blue Viper 85. Nothing else on Twitter. Uh, just Blue Viper 85. Um, I'm playing Floon Walker, a, uh, a little electrician and low voltage cabling type person, formerly potentially a uh, thief smuggler. At least Skyler, what's, your, what's your class? Are you rogue? I am a rogue. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. I'm a rogue, human rogue. Kylie, cool. tell us about your, <laughs> yourself. Uh,. I am Kylie or Kai. You can find me at Stonefly underscore Kai pretty much everywhere. Um, I primarily am on Twitter. 
And then tonight I am playing a, I hate this word, Furbolg. Furbolg. Uh, Druid going by the name Twigwomp. And I am she, her, and so is my character. Oh, and I'm she, him. I forgot to say that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thamesies. Okay. Thamesies. So that, thank you uh, all for being here. I am, uh, I like, I, I love hate sitting in the DM chair. It's, uh, I have some definite butterflies going on, but we'll we'll do this and we'll have a good time uh, because I am playing with the best crew in the biz. So here we are. You guys are, we're going to jump right into the game. You guys are part of the Odds and Ends LLC here in the, the city of Bard's Gate. You uh, come from different backgrounds. You've kind of uh, in roundabout ways found each other and, and figured out, hey, you can make a little bit of a business by uh, doing some odds and end jobs, mostly for the Liar Guard. That is kind of the, the city watch of Bard's Gate. And they have tasked you tonight with, um, there's a new uh, theater troupe in town and uh, there's quite the scuttlebutt around it. Everybody's kind of hyped up and they tasked you with just figuring out what's going on over there. What is the show like? And you're both, uh, you're all going to receive uh, 20 gold in payment for this job. Um, so, a little bit about uh, where you're at. Bard's Gate is the heart of the Stone Heart Valley, and the Bridge District is the heart of Bard's Gate. It is here that all cities' culture is at its zenith. The gleaming auditorium of the Silver Harp shines down on smaller businesses and homes. Through the King's Bridge, the lifeblood of Bard's Gate flows ceaselessly day and night. But tonight, her heart is racing, tasked by your patron, the liar guard you have come to the bridge district on an errand of great importance the maiden's kiss is being hailed as the greatest stage show stage show ever put on in the history of the city despite adding showings in recent weeks tickets are sold out in minutes it is on the lips and minds of every citizen of the city they want to see the show they need to see the show nothing will stop them from seeing the show nothing the city is at a fever pitch as you step into the middle of Central Island, you see that the desire has turned violent. Hundreds of city goers have gathered out in front of the auditorium and the Temple of the Skilled Hands, screaming and yelling. They demanded tickets, they demanded more shows. Now it seems that they demanded blood. Rocks and bottles, fists and elbows, screams and outrage. Here in the middle of a riot, you and your companions must find a way to acquire tickets to the most exclusive show in town, all while avoiding being trampled to death by a raging mob. So that's a little opening blurb. Uh, uh, it is, in fact, box text. <laughs> um, so as you guys are, you're coming over this bridge, the the five of you, and and there's the big central island here. There are other bridges that kind of connect it that are, that are a ways away. I mean, it's a pretty big uh, little island, pretty big little island in the middle of Bard's Gate. Um, there's enough cities or uh, shops and, and houses and buildings here to to make it like a thick kind of metropolitan type area uh, with obviously there is there's like a river surrounding it um, as you guys uh, approach and go over this bridge you do see what is the uh, the motley and that is that is the name of the the theater and you see Tons of people just in front trying to rush this uh, this building, trying to get tickets. Uh, what would you guys like to do? I think that we should avoid getting trampled if we can, really. But yeah, uh, other than that, I uh, I have no place. I have no idea what to go, what to do. Do you have any ideas? That's a really good idea. Let's, uh, let's not get trampled. First off, that's number one. Well, thank you, thank you, Scotch. That's very kind of you to say. Number two is we gotta go find tickets. How do we do that? So I don't know how you all feel about these concert things. I've been to a couple of them in my day back in like 200 AWC or whatever the time is. I don't know what they call time on this. Um, but uh, and I know for a fact that the the best thing we could probably do is try to fight our way to the front and establish like a little ground for ourselves, right? But uh, that's after we find tickets. So. First, we find the tickets. Second, we got to make our way to the front. Third, we establish our dominance, and we stake out our claim. I mean, certainly somebody's gonna be 
selling tickets for a high Ooh, yeah. value, right? There's got to be scalpers here somewhere. So, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe you can go talk to him and maybe use your, use your charm that you have. So I'm going to kind of scan the horizon. All right. All right. Do I see anyone who I would qualify as obviously a scalper? <laughs> yeah, give me a perception check. So you guys are standing on the bridge. You know how the bridges are humped. You're kind of right in the middle, and you can you kind of have a good uh, angle of viewing the crowd that's getting rowdy. And go ahead. Uh, I threw a 19. Oh shoot, Devin, you're blowing it out of the water. Right. So you actually you see a shadowed kind of figure standing at the corner of the building. Uh, so there's the motley and then another building and then there's an alley and you see the shadow uh, figure standing back there. You could only assume that this is some kind of back alley dealings like this. If you're gonna find uh, scalped tickets or, or tickets on the slide, that might be the way to go. And you can skirt around the, uh, the entire rioting crowd that is, that is in front. Uh, yeah, uh, if see over there, the guy standing there in the in the alley, uh, he's selling one or two things, or maybe both. Uh, he's he's selling tickets or he's selling drugs, so probably a good place to start. That's very that's that's very perceptive, Dunkirk. Um, yeah, let's let's go let's go talk to him. As Have I fun. said, not my first concert. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Kenny Chesney one time. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Uh, so you guys make it down off the bridge and there is definitely like if you've ever been at a rock concert and been kind of up towards the front of the stage, it is just it's packed and you're seeing people kind of throw elbows trying to make their way up to the front. There is really no lane of travel that you could kind of like bob and weave to get through there. But you skirt around the edge and, and you get to this uh, this alleyway and and. All the uh, the sunlight kind of goes away because you're now in between these two buildings. No sun makes it in, and and you do here as you as Dunkirk. Are, I assume you're you're leading the uh, the charge here. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm kind Why of pushing not? him. So I'm using my staff to kind of just push him in front of me, so we're just <laughs> never stopping. Oh, hey, hey there. Uh, quit quit pushing me. Uh, oh, we, oh Lord. We don't want to get lost. This is times like times like this. I wish there were a halfling. Uh, come on, get out of the way. I'm like pushing people. <clears throat> All right. So, and yeah. At, as you enter this kind of darkened alley, you do hear a. Psst, psst, what you doing oh, back uh, here? Uh, hey, hey there, friendo. Tickets? Hello, uh, tickets. Yes. We were we were kind of interested in maybe getting some uh, some of them there tickets. You uh, you got any any tickets for sale? Uh, I might have a few tickets, but you sound like uh, you could use some. You got. That's I got the that's tickets we, if I mean, you got the coin. How much? Uh, how much what? for your tickets? How many? There's five of you. I mean, three, four, four, five, five, I can eight. count. I'm just making sure that you can. There's five of you. That's gonna. I can get you a ticket. There can be ten gold a piece. If you if that's too steep, you can get out of here. Ten gold. Move on. Ten gold. Yeah. Did we? Just, I don't even think I rolled gold. <laughs> did you guys didn't roll gold? <clears throat> I rolled equipment, homie. I did too. I did too. Yep. How many people are can see into this alley? Most people are not focused in this alley. They're trying to get into the, the ticket box and trying to make it up to the front there. So nobody's really paying attention back that way. Um, I lean towards towards Floon and I'm like, uh, Floon, you are um, you're one of the like underworld like kind of like creepy kind of like crawly kind of guys, right? Like, you're <laughs> one of those, right? Sure, why not? Okay, like you're, so you're like the same as this guy, right? Uh, similar. I can think this like, guy's a little more dastardly than I am. Can you like, you know, like some sort of like, you know, like bro code or something? Try to get like the price down? <laughs> have you, ever, you know, have you ever tried something like that? Do you think you could do that? I don't know if this guy knows my style. <laughs> but I can try. <laughs> You get you, you're either gonna buy the tickets or you're gonna get out of my alley. What, just, just a what makes hey, this your on, alley what, exactly? Well, I'm standing here. And as you as you talk, I wanna put my finger to your lips and go shh shh shh. As 
<laughs> he goes to push it away, and as you as you do draw that hand towards him, you see four figures come out of the shadows behind him, like deeper in the alley. They're now just standing in the alley, kind of. Hey, hey, boss, we're you okay? And he's like, yeah, these guys, it's fine. Because you guys, you buy or you go. I mean, we'll get somebody in this alley buying some tickets. Okay, then. I, I think it's our time to go, fellas. I mean, I don't mean to cause any trouble. Do, do we have gold? We, we need to figure this out. I would, say, yeah, I would say you have. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So, so that makes it. We're gonna spend you could afford gold. the 10 gold. Let's we're going to spend that. 10 gold to make 20 gold. <laughs> double our, our profits. Let's <laughs> <laughs> double our profits. <laughs> Collect um, underpants. <laughs> Profit. Uh... Oof. All right, all right. Oof. Oof. No reason to get testy there. Uh, hey, maybe maybe a group deal. Ask him for ask him for a group deal. Yeah, I mean we're buying five tickets here. It's right before the show is going to start. You don't want those to go to waste, do you? I mean, I'm get, we're giving you all the money we got. All right, give me a give me a persuasion check. Let's. Uh, persuasion. Yeah, fourteen. Do them that uh, advice sounds. I mean, <laughs> I could throw in some Good tea man. leaves or something with it. You just throw her. Are you you're standing in the back, kind of? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I don't think I've ever seen one like you before. Dang. So, all right. All five of you buy a ticket. You throw in some tea leaves. We can make a deal happen. All right. Mm. It, what's the deal? Well, the tea leaves is what did it. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good tea leaves. Twenty-five gold for five. Just Whoa. give you. The, yeah, we'll go I... half. Because you're right. I don't want to be sitting on these once the show starts. Smart man. I got other you're stuff to do. Smart guy. So I'm going to like look <clears throat> him in the eye and. Um, Somewhat intimidatingly, I would hint. Uh, and uh, I say, are you implying that her tea leaves are not the best tea leaves in in this side of uh, whatever country you are in right now? Uh, These are priceless. Do you have any idea? Do you have taste? Well, actually, I was implying that I'm interested in these tea leaves. That's why I'm giving <laughs> you the half off. Half off? Half yeah. off for these tea leaves? These are well, tea half leaves. off these tickets for these tea leaves. Yeah, that's a deal. This ain't Again, worth pushing our like, luck for. What? What'd you say? This is not worth pushing our luck for. Uh, I'm good with the twenty-five. You should listen to this guy here. He's I mean, maybe we don't want to. F- I mean, I don't want to fight. I he's, do not. He's, he's talking he's, about fighting. Yeah, let's let's just. I, mean, I think we should just pay the guy. I mean, yeah, we still gotta fight through the crowd to even get into the door. Is there are these general admission or are these? We have yeah. Can, I roll, can I roll an inside check on the actual ticket? <laughs> yeah. sure can we like check the hologram ticket? for authenticity. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, are you rolling insight on him? On um, well, yes, and on the. You ticket. haven't seen the tickets yet. He, I, oh. he has not. Oh, oh he hasn't. Okay. Well, you so gotta present I the tickets. I rolled a fifteen on insight for him. Uh. Yeah, he's shady. Obviously, he's, he's got he's shady as fuck. He's sitting in the bed this back alley, but he does seem to be truthful in the fact that he has tickets and he is. They are for the show. All right, we, so he 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 pulls open his vest and he does pulls out and he fans the mountain. Five tickets right here. Can I uh, examine the tickets to make sure that they look legit? Yeah, you can give me a investigation check while you're. Hey, and how do I do that? Which one do I roll? Okay, so ooh, first roll, first roll. So first you're in roll twenty. Roll, yeah. yeah. Twelve, and then my modifier is for. Did you say perception? Oh uh, yeah, we can go perception. That's fine. Um, perception would be a two, so I have fourteen. Okay, so fourteen. You see, they are printed on uh, something. It's it's not just regular paper. It's it's a little thicker cardstock, so it, it does have that kind of official kind of feel to it there is a golden stamp uh, or seal of kind of uh, uh I, I guess we can say approval there 
there is like some uh it looks like they are official there's okay. enough enough embellishments on there that it's not just some slapdash uh piece of paper and all the words are spelled correctly yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh and you do as you with that role you can tell that uh these do say balcony seats on them okay. i mean we can work that out okay right. i mean what do we, I what do we got I think that these are legitimate, so yeah. If these are balcony seats, but they look legitimate, to everybody. I'm gonna pull out my little coin purse. I'm just like one, two, how many? How many three, that's, 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 four, five a piece. Five, and I hand him five coins, and then in the other hand, I hand him some muffins. Here, these. I I made these just for you. We lost. Oops. Mute That's bug, funny. mute bug. It's the mute bug. <laughs> Skull splitter. Skull splitter. GA. On Twitter. Didn't make the mute bug, but they can help you by rolling dice. <laughs> so you got? I thought. I thought I said tea leaves. She's got. Oh. I will pause. Well, I have. Morning Thunder or Tension Tamer, mm. uh, Sleepy Time. Mm. And I you mean, hear I over <laughs> behind him. Take the Sleepy Time. One of his uh, partners <laughs> behind him. All right, that that Sleepy Time tea is pretty darn good. So uh, uh, I'll just I, I, I'll I'll give you some of that. I'll take the Sleepy Time. And and, and uh, if you like this, here's my card too, because I'm I'm trying to open a apothecary. I will keep that in mind. My, my bran muffins are for free. Bra they're bran? Who eats bran? Well, they keep I've regular. told him that. I've told him that a thousand times. They, He's got to do something like the chocolate or the raspberry or something like that. I, chocolate sounds good. They they keep you regular. Is all I'm saying. They, they will make. I don't need it, but. And I as mean, I just, as I hand it to him, I'm gonna cup the side of his head and say thank you. And just walk away. <laughs> this is the weirdest transaction I've ever Kiana, had. I appreciate the health concerns you have with your muffins. I like the cut of your gym. Kiana, can you break a platinum? <laughs> <laughs> just. He puts a ticket in your hand. Just <laughs> get out of my sight. <laughs> Well, this has been the whole this has been the whole one shot, guys. We got the tickets. <laughs> That's it. You got the tickets. We got it. Uh, we got it. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, so these tickets are for tonight. Don't, don't be late. Yep, we're on our way there right I'll now. Work tomorrow. We All already right. had our dinner. All right. So he collects gold and and your muffins and, and then your tea leaves and he turns around uh, uh, quickly, put, kind of pockets them. And he goes, walks back with his uh, the four other me uh, men that were behind him. Make sure you share those with your friend there. Yeah, we'll we'll divvy it up just right. Don't worry. I'm gonna turn like... the party deck <laughs> jokes on him. I got the uh, whole wheat muffins for everybody here who wants one. That's not any better. <laughs> it's, it's it's way better. I mean, clear. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll take a muffin. And so uh, I pull them pull them out of my pocket, not wrapped. <laughs> I'll hand it to you. Uh, uh, yeah, I already, I already ate. So, yeah, same, same here, man. These will, yeah. these will keep you, keep you going through the night. It's enough energy in this whole week to uh, keep it going through this party we're gonna have. Yeah, there's it's nothing worse than going to the bathroom at a rock concert, though. Uh. We we could say this those 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 muffins are equivalent to one good berry. So there's okay. a, there's, a, there's a hit point there. Yes, I knew I did <laughs> Give you guys a, a little uh, little buffer. But you must oh, make no. a constitution check to see if you don't vomit. So oh no! <laughs> uh, so as you guys are are kind of gathering there, you do see a lot of the people that were kind of riding and pushing towards the the ticket box uh, start to disperse a little bit, uh, and they are. Some pathways are starting to open up. Is there still people fighting? Uh, they weren't like full blown like bar fight. They were more like jostling to get towards the front to try to get a ticket. You know, driving elbows into the small of backs and trying to find a path to uh, move forward. 
but it was it was just one big log jam nobody was really moving anyways but now after this conversation in the alley uh you can see them starting to disperse i feel like i move easily and calmly through the crowd so i'm just gonna like mosey like okay. i mean i could lead us to the balcony so as you mosey. are you are you coming out from the alley Mm-hmm. okay yeah and as you do you do see that ticket what was the ticket box close and you do see one man uh standing uh in front of the door and he's trying to like form lines get in a line if you have a ticket get in a line and he, they're trying to like now herd these people who are uh ticketed to get into the uh the motley here i mean the right thing to do is to get in the back of the line guys that is the right thing to do but uh, this is not what I want to do. How much time is there both between now and the time the show starts? Uh, you got about... So when you look at your ticket, it does say uh, the show time is in about 20 minutes. How long I mean, is we, the line? So what we get... It's probably it's pretty 50 long. deep. We, we, gotta, we gotta get a beer. You know, Dunkirk's gotta pee. He, he's gotta pee before anything. Long. Dang, we need to probably crusty. try this, this push up to the front. Uh, can I go up to, like, not the front, but close to the front, and then just, like, look at someone who looks like they have, like, they're weaker than the others, <laughs> and be like, we are here now. Yeah, give me give me a perception check, see if you can uh, kind of pinpoint this, this mark that you're looking for. Okay. <clears throat> that is a 17 with a modifier, so 19. Ooh. Yeah, you see one of your you see a friend that you you have actually known. He he's a he's one of the the people in I can't remember the name of the bar that you play in or the tavern that you play uh, in. The uh, the Lion's Lair, Lyra Lion, <laughs> the Lion's Lair. <laughs> you see you see old Tom. He's he's about ten people deep, and he is he's a regular at that at that bar, and you do see him standing up there. Uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, Tom, did you say his name was Tom? Yeah, old Tom. Okay. Uh, hey, old Bob, how are you? Uh... Lear, what are you doing here? Uh, did you I... you get a ticket? I, sh we, I sure did. Me and my, uh, my cohorts, my, my, uh, minions, cohorts. Well, get in line! They're not gonna mind if you cut up here. You're not gonna mind, are you? And they, he is getting, like, some stern, dirty looks, but, uh, you guys are... There's five of you, and there's, you know, he's, he's kind of pushing his way back, opening up a little bit for you to get in. It's it's a line, but now there's a little little bulbous little pocket. Uh, I'm gonna, protrusion. I'm going to take that is his hand line. and put my hand on top of it and say, thank you. You know, you know Lyra? She works for Dang. us. Yeah, I see her all the time. She's playing. Yes, and uh, old Tom, I really, uh, I really have to say that... Uh, it's uh, folks like you that's me working at that shithole, worth it. Well, I'm glad I can bring some joy. I mean, you bring so much to everybody. It's just great. Didn't, wasn't it your friend that started calling me the leering Lyra Lyons? <laughs> I think so, that alliterative bastard. He's always like <laughs> grouping words together that is, I don't know. You know, I never really caught that fella's name. Can you give me his name? And like the uh. general area he lives. Oh dang! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, he lives outside, of, just on the other side of this, uh, the the river here. Back, you know, he's a couple doors down from the the the, the, the shit. I can't remember the name of the the, <laughs> the lion's lair. The lion's lair. Yeah, he's right over there. Well, that is that's such a coincidence. I I happen to be heading there as soon as I have a spare moment. <laughs> Well, he's probably there. I mean, he's, he doesn't have a job anymore. He's sitting around. But yeah, I mean, you guys, you got tickets to the show? Yeah. I've yeah. been out here do all you, morning. Do you know what it costs us? In line. Us? What, what's that? Do you know what it costs us? One of the, I'm going to hand him a brand, a brand muffin in my pocket. And Were we, you bought really? tickets for a muffin? No, 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 no. We paid the muffin for the ticket. Yeah. Oh, mu muffin and tea leaves. Yeah, and and really, I was. These these actually are mine, and they're sold from Son of a... the odds and ends that we run. Oh, 
It's a yeah, part, like, part of our catering services. You know, force it no, kind of to him, like closer and closer. <laughs> oh, like, I mean, do I need? I I. It's a rug I mean, snack, my friend. Okay, I'll take one. I, but you know what I did to get this ticket? I've been out here. I had to camp out all morning, Maybe. through the night, in the morning. I got up and I'm in line. I barely got one. Is that good of a show? It's that's what I've heard. Everybody's raving about it. That lady asked Marissa, she has the most beautiful voice I've heard. I can't so wait to hear it. Wait, so well, you I haven't have heard it personally, but I've heard of it. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. All right. I mean, you guys are going to check it out for yourself. You're darn tootin' we are. So as that kind of conversation is going on, you do see the doors open up now and people start to file inside. And they, there's a little pickup in their step that are, you know, rushing to get in. Like the people at the back want to be in as fast as they can. And you walk in, there is is a, a lobby to here. There are two doors that enter into the theater. Uh, you guys going to continue into the theater? Uh, I mean, is there a merchandise table? <laughs> uh, no, there's not. Oh. It's, what it's kind a of rock and roll show lobby. is this? <laughs> <laughs> pretty empty lobby, just... Uh, it's more just they want to have as much room for bodies that they could fit in to this uh, this lobby. There's no no room for anything else. And I don't think we established. Is it general admission? Uh, your seats say lo- or a balcony. Your seats say balcony. Okay. So uh, we got to go to the balcony there. Are there snacks? Could we uh, get some snacks before we head up there? <laughs> some kind of sausage or something. Yeah, for the the sake of this, you... On each side, so you walk in, main door. There's two doors going into what is the general admission. Two doors uh, outside of that, that head up. And then on the left-hand side, there is a little concession stand. Oh, perfect. I'm going to go get me some concessions. Uh, If you go, if anybody want to come with? I'll go with. You want some some nachos, dear? I would love some nachos. Could Lots you bring me back some hot fantasy. water? Some hot, some hot water for your tea? Yeah, please. Yeah, I think I can probably do that. It's probably going to be like 15 gold pieces, though. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm for hot water? I mean, is this your first rock and roll concert? Oh my yeah, it is my first rock and roll concert. Oh, yeah, it's going to be 15 gold pieces for a cup of hot water, I'm pretty sure. But that's okay. I got, I covered this one. Uh, so I'll go over with Floon and, and go to the concession stand. Uh, yeah, you see general concessions. They, they got a, a tankard of ale back there or a big uh, you know, barrel of ale that they've been tapping off of. They, <clears throat> they got some wine. They do have uh, like just general snacks. Like what, what you looking for? What, what you need, says the, uh, the uh, attendant there. Uh, let's see here. Uh... You got you got like a sausage or or you know like a worst or something on you know like a hot dog or something like yeah. that. Yep, okay. our worst is our best. Uh, ooh, <laughs> I like that. Uh, I'll take one of those and I'll have a a, a pretzel if you got a pretzel. Uh, flu, you want you want nach- nachos? I want nachos. I want pretzel. Actually, make it two pretzels. Uh, we'll take a plate of the nachos there. Do you want the jalapenos? Oh, whatever you got to put on it, put on it. All right. We'll take whatever you can throw on there. You can Ooh. throw on some of the onions from the sausages on there if you want. Uh, and then we want uh, two more pretzels. Uh, I'll take uh, three beers uh, for me. Uh, there's not a two-beer limit at a time, is there? No. You're not no. one of those establishments, are no, you? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, three beers for me. Floon. Strawberry daiquiri. <laughs> nice. Oh. You can see his eyes kind of roll back because that means they. Have that <laughs> he's got to make like, something. It's rush hour and they have to make something. So he's like, "You sure you don't want just a beer?" I'm pretty sure that look on your face said that no, I do not. All right, you see, there are some people behind him. Like, if you know, if you've ever been to Costco and they're, you know, you're ordering, but other people are grabbing it all, and half the stuff's on the table. Somebody runs over to the the ice bucket and he starts smashing it up he's he's got your daiquiri going throwing in some fresh strawberries just mulling it all together uh <laughs> your all your beers come out finally uh your your strawberry daiquiri it's got a little sprig of uh, mint on top 
Uh, I'll toss ooh, the guy fate. a single gold piece as a tip for it. Yeah. If only uh, everybody. Oh, and a cup of hot water, please. Ah, uh, cup of hot water. Yeah, yeah, cup of hot water, please. All right. Uh, you need anything else with the hot water? Just hot water. Just the hot water, please. Up. Yeah, okay. And yeah, he takes the kettle off the little burner in the back, pours it out. You got your hot water. All right. Thank you very much, dear partner. Yes. Hey, ho, and ho. I'll, we got to settle up. I'll throw, uh, yeah, how much do I owe you, dear? Yeah, that's going to be... Uh, he's kind of adding it all up. I should have should have added this up as we were going. Uh, that's going to be... Uh, let's call it five silver. It's all good. Five silver? That's a yeah. steal there. Uh, yeah, I'll be, ba I'll be that back down during intermission. Uh, after I make a little more room in my tummy, and I'll throw him, uh, I'll throw him like seven silver. Ah, uh, good. Yeah, that's for the daiquiri. Yeah, that's for your troubles. No, the gold piece was for the daiquiri. All right. He's a, so as he's you, a big as, tipper. <laughs> as you guys are uh, ordering this, what's everybody else doing? So where you're at, next to the concession stand, there are some stairs that go up, and then there's stairs on the other, the far other end of the lobby that go up. I'm gonna Do go find, wanna... find our seats. Yeah, I was gonna go find my seat and then just pull out a muffin and start eating it. <laughs> <laughs> so as you go up the stairs, you you are now on the balcony, and it's 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 a horseshoe shaped balcony. It doesn't go kind of obviously it doesn't go all the way around. It goes uh, around enough. Uh, down below, you see bench seating uh, where it's starting to fill in and get packed. And in front of the bench seating, there is a sunken orchestra pit that you do see uh, people start to set up their instruments, start to get them in tune. Uh, there is the stage, and then behind the stage, there are some red velvet curtains that people are coming in and out of, trying to set up stage and, and kind of any last minute uh, setup that's going on. So, uh, <laughs> Scratch, you, you sit down, you find your seat, you start chomping on a muffin. What about... Um, uh, Kylie, I don't, I can't remember. Twigwomp. Twigwomp and uh, Lyra, what, what are you, are you two following Scratch? Do I fit very well up there? It's a, it's a tight fit being a furbolg. Your, your build is a, a not quite uh, what was in mind for these, these uh, upper balcony seats, but uh, you fit. It's not going to be the most comfortable of shows, but. I'm going to okay. like, I'm going to go beside, oh shoot, I forgot Bob's character. Scratch. Name. Scratch. And like, you know when people like get into their seat and they kind of yeah. like make room? I'm gonna go in like and I'm then I'm gonna like lay my shoulder back. You know how when like yeah. in the theater Dominate when people are position. like, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna be like Yeah, and you're you're definitely taking up both like armrest and <laughs> <laughs> every slide I've ever been on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're you're definitely like commanding the uh the the situation here uh so scratch then, you're you're nibbling on your uh, muffin and you yeah, are getting kind of like jostled. i'm more passive so i'm gonna like just give the armrest and just be like <laughs> just suck it all in and be like what kind of muffin are you eating now this one this one's brand this is... give the other one brand. brand again do you do you make poppy seed ones no, just, just... <laughs> I'm a more traditional baker. I like uh, bran, whole wheat, um, some oat. Does Sometimes any... oat. Oat's okay. Do you give away your muffins because nobody wants to buy them? <sighs> no, I mean it's it's marketing. You know, Dunkirk, he he's the business mind of stuff, but he always tells me that we need to market better. So. I, I give these away as samples to get people to come back and buy more. You should make tasty muffins. <laughs> taste is really in the eye of the beholder. And these taste pretty good. I would say taste is the eye of the furbolg. Well, maybe put a... You could shove some of your tea leaves into it. <gasps> Ooh, into that would make a, a good muffin. I feel, like, uh, I feel like we're just two stoners with their lives. Shit. I think I've had this conversation before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Lyra, what, what are you doing as they're having this conversation about you? I'm listening to it. And uh, <laughs> then I'm 
<laughs> kind of completely bypass it. Be like, have either of you been to a show like this before? No. No. I envy you. Showbiz. It's bullshit. Do you do you play for I, crowds like this? I mean, like recitals when I was younger. Like my fathers are both bards, and they're like big name bards or whatever. My dad is like really known for like getting rid of the competition because he's like a dancer and whatever, and he loves caltrops. And so like he gets rid of the competition. I'm sure you can figure out that. Just like <laughs> sprinkle a couple caltrops around, and then they just, you know, you're, you're out of the game forever. That's why showbiz is bullshit. Yeah, that's savage. <laughs> yeah. Um, what instrument do you play? Uh, I play the um, the lyre, the lute, and the pan flute. Wow, it fits your name. And I'm going to pull out my pan flute and just go to town. <laughs> <laughs> Looking her in the eye. <laughs> yeah, I say we just have this, this pan flute like duel. Like. I don't, oh, wow, that is very good. I don't think I could keep up with you. That is very good. I think she's saying it's really bad. bad. No, no. I'm not no. my pan flute skills. <laughs> okay, so, come at me, bro. Oh, fuck, we're at a fish concert. If, yeah, you, <laughs> if you really want to do this duet, I mean, Scratch, you've done so much for me, I'll do a duet with you. And I pull out my pan flute from God knows where. And I go to town on the pan flute. Dude, we were, yeah, we were just back and forth. <laughs> it was like, uh, <laughs> dueling, dueling the devil pan goes flutes. to Georgia pan flute style. <laughs> couple, a couple people sitting around you are like, you guys aren't in the show. You guys are pretty good. I think the orchestra sits down there. Oh, wait, wait. Scratch is like in his space. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. It's like, like the end of my flute is like me and you. And I'm just like, aqua lung. <laughs> and, and at that, uh, Dunkirk and Floon, you guys make your way up and see, like, kind of in the middle of this uh, epic flute battle, uh, your seats, you guys are on the end. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad. But as you guys sit down, the uh, the lights all start to dim. And the uh, the Motley th in the Motley Theater, you and your companions, uh, the, the curtains open, and now you start to, the show starts to unfold. And we're going to kind of uh, fast track through some of this. But the tragedy, the maiden's kiss, unfolds in front of you. Powerful performances, untamed passion unfold before your eyes. Heroism, villainy, are yours to witness. By the time you realize you've been drawn into the high drama so utterly and completely, it's too late. With an orchestral crescendo and the flash of a bloody blade, all are left dead on the stage and the lights slowly rise. The crowd erupts in roaring ovation and you find yourself again part of the mob, leaping to your feet. With thunderous applause, I need everybody to give me a wisdom save. Walk me, walk me Ooh. through that. I okay. Was... So let me open Lyra's sheet here. Wisdom saves are going to be their own box. They are above your skills. You'll see it says saving throws at the bottom of the box. You don't have a modifier, so just roll a d20, and that's what you get. Okay. I got a six. Six. That was a seven Six. for me. <laughs> Twenty-three. Wow. Oh, I'm wise as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that tea leaves, man. Uh, what'd you get, uh, Scratch? Fifteen. And Lyra? A one, but what? <laughs> <laughs> get it out of the way early. Uh, uh, so, uh, Dunkirk, what was yours again? I had a seven. And then Floon, one more time. That was a six. Oh, man. Okay. So, yeah, you two especially, or you three, excuse me, Floon, Dunkirk, and Lyra, you're really jumping up, and you are just clapping your, as hard as you can. You are so excited. Uh, Scratch and um, Twig Thwomp. Twig. <laughs> the Scott Twig. 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 <laughs> twig Twiggy. Uh, Twiggy. You feel like you stand up quickly, but then uh, you feel like that urge to just lose your mind over the show kind of fade away a little bit and you're looking around and especially at your companions up here they are just losing their shit like this is it and as you got Scratch, go I thought she said showbiz was bullshit 
Showbiz is bullshit, but this yeah. isn't showbiz. This is art. Nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna give her a high five. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna be that guy at the concert. The high fives are very random. Like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is art. This is so good. Yeah, give me a perception check. Yeah, thirteen. You see, there's a couple individuals like sprinkled throughout that are are doing the same thing. Uh, you and and Twig are doing. Just kind of like looking around, clapping, but like not really knowing. Um, and as that's going on. You see uh, those bodies that were, quote, murdered on stage. They get up and they do their bow. And uh, more people come out and do their bow. And finally, the lead, Lady Asmarissa uh, herself, is the last to appear. Her beauty is unparalleled. Blood red hair, eyes as dark as midnight, with a smile that could drive men to madness. She makes her final bow, as do all the others before. They slowly disappear back behind the heavy velvet curtain. And uh, people start to file out. Uh, some are still like clapping as they're being ushered out by their significant other who uh, are kind of like, dude, what's going on? Let's, let's get out. Uh, everybody's just kind of clapping and people are starting to tear down now, starting to the orchestra, starting to put away and scratch with that uh, perception check. You do see the orchestra in the orchestra pit. You do see a, 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 little, uh, a little hatch, a little door that uh, some orchestra members are going in, some are putting their gear up on the stage and going out that way, uh, and, and then going through the, uh, the behind the curtains. You guys aren't like controlled, like you can't do anything, but you are just like clapping a little bit. You're like, you feel it. Like this show really, t really touched you. Can I but you are you? You are in control you? of your faculties. Oh, we have to uh, get backstage. Okay. Oh, we gotta go backstage. I got, what was the name of the lady? I'm sorry. Uh, Lady Asmarissa. Uh, do we, if we would we know that like for the program or the ticket or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and she was she was the one on stage. She was the lead. She was uh, you know she was the one that was uh, driving the play, making this epic, heroic, and 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 the show is just making it what it was. And when she came out, the crowd lost their freaking mind. Guys, I uh, kind of forgot. Are we like trying to get something? What are we doing here? Uh, we came to watch a wonderful concert, find out what the big deal was. I mean, you saw it. It was oh, it was a masterpiece. It was a masterpiece. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you just follow around from town to town, right? I did that when I was like 20 years old. Just followed a little band around across wherever they went. They call us the groupies. I mean, and, uh, it was all right, but I don't know that it was like groupie, follow around, good. You just don't did know we watch music. the same show? Did did you not hear her voice? I mean, she sings like an angel. More than an angel, she's a she's basically a, a, a goddess. Yes, a that's goddess. the word. Yes, goddess. I looked into the eyes of the goddess, and I swear she looked back. <laughs> I mean, I scratch what he. I mean, you're welcome to be wrong. There's there's no accounting for taste or anything like that. Uh, but, I mean, I don't get it. How 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 were you not... Do we know that... Do, can they, do they get a clue that maybe, like, something's not right about us? Yeah, with with Scratch's uh, perception check looking around, he, he could tell that there's some that are feeling it like you are, and then there's some that are feeling it like him, and some seem to be under this this kind of uh, charmed effect where they are like loving this and 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 acting like you are right now so yeah he, they the, scratch is kind of in on it not in on it as in he's part of it but he knows something like you need to be slapped awake here i mean we let's go backstage and see see what's going on what, what all the magic is about let's see them make how they make their magic let's uh look behind the kimono as some might say yeah so you see you see crew members start to pick up and start to uh put stuff backstage you see some of the orchestra pit start to uh get their equipment up and out some are going down in that that little hatch that you saw uh yeah <clears throat> lady asmarissa definitely went out through the uh through that little hatch yeah i'm going i'm going to the hatch okay how how you want to do it so there are like members of the the motley that like um, not cast members but people who work there ushers 
let's call them ushers, that are there that are kind of ushering people in, in this case, out. Out. Uh, out. Out. Um, so we're, we're on a balcony. How, how far down is it from said balcony? Let's say it's 20 feet down. If you go over the edge, there are this, this uh, for the acoustics of this place, it is lined with that same red velvet curtain that you could uh, possibly duck into if you need how, to. How many, are, uh, how many ushers are on the main floor in the general seating area? In, there's, in between there's, me and the hatch. You and the hatch, There's there are two that are walking down the main aisles that are kind of uh, going back and forth. Right now, they are just starting to uh, go underneath the balcony, and you're going to lose sight of them here in a second. I'm going to wait till they're underneath, and I'm going to just acrobatic. I'm going to do a do a monk flip all the way down. Okay, and then and then where are you going from there? I'm going to try and stick to whatever shadows there are. And okay. just go straight for the hatch. Alright, all right. give me an uh, acrobatics check and a stealth check. Uh... Did you stub your toe? <laughs> there's, a, there's a one. All right. So as <laughs> as you're like reeling onto the rail oh and God. then kicking your feet up and over, you actually just, your your hands slip off the rail and you do plummet. Uh, oh, whoa, wild roll. Uh, you take one point of bludgeoning <clears throat> damage. Uh, as you fall, uh, <laughs> go ahead and give me a stealth check as, and we'll see if that, cause since that was for the uh, jump. It's and then we'll get to everybody 16. else with their... 16. All right, so 16. You're able to write yourself pretty quick and get over into the curtains and, and kind of uh, hide <laughs> yourself. And you look up, and what are you guys doing as you see uh, Scratch <laughs> Swan dive off the uh, the rail here? Always running into things there. Uh, and just so are, we know, you they... guys aren't charmed. Anymore? You just have like this overwhelming kind uh, of, of feel for it. Okay. But, um, but whatever effects have kind of... Uh, Faded. Okay. Is that also accurate for me who rolled a? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the three okay. of you, uh, Floon, uh, Dunkirk, and Lyra, you guys, that kind of that warm sensation kind of faded. Now, especially seeing Scratch jump over and and thud on the floor there. Are there uh, are there instruments on stage? You said Just there like... are some. That, so the orchestra pit, they're bringing them, setting them up on stage to be taken to the back. There was probably two or three people that went down through that hatch. Okay, so here's a possible plan for us. Uh, Lyra, you have your own instrument. Uh, Twiggy and and uh, Floon and I. It might. It, what if we all just kind of snuck our way up there and we grabbed the instruments and we're hey we're part of the orchestra here mm -hmm. and and try and sneak into the back that way. I mean, I have three on me, so like. We only really need to find one. Do you want the... I actually have an instrument, guys. Yeah. Look at us. We all came prepared. Wait, uh -huh. This is Bard's Gate. It's uh, the latest latest fashion to always have an instrument. This is like being in Nashville. I've never heard you of Nashville, but it sounds like a very fashionable place. All right, so how are you guys leaving the balcony? I, I I mean, you said that there's some 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 red like velvet ro uh, curtains. Yeah, that that okay. line the outside to kind of help the acoustics of this uh, this uh, theater. Are there any within a uh, hand reach of the balcony? Like, could we yeah, shimmy down one? Your balcony uh, terminates like the landing of the stairs terminates into the wall, and you could you could grab uh, onto that. Okay, let's all grab an instrument, and we can just kind of shimmy our way down down to curtains here, and then we. We, we mix in with the orchestra and we're in the back. Uh, so, um, I'm not sure that me shimmying is going to be that, uh, uh, I don't know. I feel like they might observe that of me since I'm so large. So I'll, I'll just take the stairs. <laughs> All right. So oh, if you, yeah, yeah, I was going to also take the, take the stairs because they were built for a reason. <laughs> There's stairs. Oh. They go down. I'm, I'm, I'm shimmying. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. That's all you got. Oh, I'm gonna finish just scarfing down the last bit of my food. Take a dainty little drink of my daiquiri, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shimmy down too. And I'm just gonna wow. get up, bolt for the curtain, and just try and slide down. 
All right, so, so if you're Lyra, shimming down, I'll follow you. All right, those are two that are shimming down. Give me athletics checks. You, uh, hand over hand, kind of come on down this uh, the curtain there. Six. <laughs> Level two, baby. <laughs> well, and a zero modifier yeah, on that Devin. one. Devin, what do you got? I got a fifteen. Okay. Yeah, Dunkirk, you you kind of you get one foot up on the rail, and the next one, and you grab on, and you're just a fireman going down the pole. Quick hand over hand. Let me do that again. Uh, and you, you make your way down, and, oh, no. and, and you you immediately just slide into the uh, curtain right behind, right next to Scratch. Uh, Floon, you come up, and you just you didn't get the perfect grip. Your foot slips a little bit. And you burn the shit out of your hands as you're just going down. You, you forget that hand over hand is the action that you should be taking. Uh, and you just burn your hands. Uh, you don't you don't take any damage, but they sting a little bit. They're on fire. Uh, Good thing I wear gloves for work. <laughs> oh, I try too hard. I always try too hard. Twig and Lyra, as you're going down the stairs, you, you meet that usher that was that went underneath. He's now making his way up. He's like, time to go. Cleaning out the theater. Next show starts soon. And he's he's kind of like ushering you towards the front. Like the way you came in, not not towards the uh Lyra, the do you wanna do that thing where you like stare at them and like they like listen? Oh, uh you mean talk talking and uh, convincing? <laughs> <laughs> You mean talking and looking? Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, like, but like, with like a little bit of a mean voice that you kind of oh. do. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've got this. Yeah. So I'm going to look at the, the usher and I'll look him in the eyes and they'll be like, we're going this way. Oh, well, you can't go that way. The show's over. We are Time going go outside. that way. And you're not going to stop us because right. we are going that way. Uh, you can give me an intimidation check. Oh boy! Is this for the invisibility of us now? No, you guys are before? they're they're at like the landing of the, the stairs that are going down, and then mm -hmm. around the corners Invisibly. where you guys would be. Okay. Yeah. It is really polarized. It's a twenty. Oh, natural or <laughs> natural twenty? So twenty. Oh, beautiful! This is the time to do it. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, he rolled a four on his uh, inside. Oh He's, no! Uh, uh, well, I. Why do you need to go in there? Do you? What are you, a cop? Well, we, I, I just have orders to, you know, we got to sweep and clean before the next show. But uh, I mean, if you, it sounds like you have business in there, so. Yeah. Yeah, you might want to go. Yeah. Yes. Check it out. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah, and he he continues up the stairs, and you guys able to come back? Or you don't see. Unless they are, they're kind of whispering at you or, or making a signal at you. You don't see the th the three uh, gentlemen. They are they are hiding in the curtains. <laughs> so yeah, Lyra, that 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 thing was what I was talking about. Yeah, I can teach you how to do it. You just look at them and then you think of the person you hate the most and you murder them in your mind. Um, <laughs> I, uh, hate is a strong word. I I don't know that I hate anybody. Oh. What's that like? <laughs> Peaceful. What's that like? <laughs> Twig Wong, do you remember? It was like probably like 10 years ago or something. There was like this musician. His name was Bustin Bieber. And like he was the all the rage. Do you remember him? I, I yeah, like I, I remember like. They called it Dustin Fever, just uh, Dustin Fever. You got this. Yeah, yep, exactly. I loved him so much, and I commissioned a painting of him. And then one day, I actually met him, and he was an asshole. And that's when my life turned around. For the worse. Just... <laughs> so you guys hiding in the curtains hear this conversation. <laughs> A conversation as you're trying to. <laughs> uh, and the, the stage now does start to get uh, rather sparse with people. There's one or two people that are kind of cleaning up real quickly. The ushers have made their way up and, and uh, scratch. You can see two ushers up on the top that kind of meet in the middle and they're going to start their rounds coming back down. 
at the so underneath. Yeah, they're up on the balcony, and they okay. those two people that came up the path up the stairs met, and now they're going back down to so, uh, start their rounds. Yeah, I'm gonna still try and move as Heidi as I can, but I'm gonna have like my flute out, like I'm carrying it into the okay. orchestra right. and into the hatch. So if I do get seen, it's like I'm doing something. Okay. Uh, are you so? Are you staying in the curtains or are you? I, just I outside the curtains, moving down the As long as I path. can, and then at the stage, right. go into the pit, okay. into the hatch. Yeah, because those curtains will go all the way to the stage, and then they'll, they'll terminate there, and then you can go, uh, you can crawl along the stage and then get into the orchestra pit. Yeah, I'm going <clears> to <throat> tap, okay. tap Dunkirk with my staff and just motion, like silent, and start moving. I was hoping okay. to be playing your own theme music as you were stealthing. All right, so yeah, you're moving. Uh, mm -hmm. Anybody moving in the curtains? Yeah, give me another stealth check. In. So, if you are you all moving together? Um, I wasn't planning on stealthing. Uh, I I was going to take one of uh, Lyra's instruments. Uh, what what instruments do you have, Lyra? Uh, I have the lyre, the lute, and the pan flute. Uh, I'll take the flute. Yeah. Um, so I was hoping for something a little bigger. Um, do they have like a, a, a trombone or a tuba or something like that up at the front? Oh, you asking me? Sorry. Yeah. Is there is there a is there a tuba up at the front or a sousaphone? Uh, <laughs> what the hell is a hurdy gurdy. There, there's a there's a sitar that is left. You guys remember playing that in my grad uh, school? The sitar, you'd strum. Uh, no, there, there is a, there is a brass instrument that is left up on the stage. Okay. Kind of uh, so edge. I'm going, I'm going to uh, make my way to the front, and uh, if I get a second when nobody's looking, I'm going to grab the tuba. Okay. Um, I am a dwarf, and I'm going to just try and carry this thing. Be like, like it's okay. I'm with the orchestra here. All right. Yeah, you want my equipment. <laughs> Okay, so you're going the bold route. It, what's everybody else doing? So Scratch is going uh, Curtain and a Stealthy. Uh, Dunkirk, you're going bold for the instrument. Everybody else, which way you want to go? I'm going with Dunkirk. Okay. What do you, what do you think, Twiggle? Uh, I mean, we have instruments, and you got us through one time. Let's just go. All right, yeah, and Scratch can just be like, Bobbing and weaving in the in the corner. I mean, he's a little <laughs> odd, but yeah. All right, so <laughs> scratch. You make you make your way to the stage, uh, like bobbing in and out of these shadows. <laughs> That's what I imagine too, like just in the top, like <laughs> yeah, Mission Impossible theme playing. Uh, everybody else is just kind of boldly walking down the uh, the step or down the pathway. Uh, I want the group, the four of you that are walking down the path. Give me. Either performance or deception. Uh, I, I kind of I think performance is the right one here. So give me a performance. Yeah, check. act like you belong. It'll be a group DC, so uh, half of you need to pass, and the give other. Give me my self you know, check too. There's room for failure here. Natural one, so a three. If you, Owie. Uh, uh, I got it's ten. Nineteen. Ten, nineteen. Done, Kurt. I had a, I had a seventeen. Yeah, so three three of you pass. Uh, you're owning this kind of, you don't look the part, but you just, you, you're carrying this gravitas with you that you're, you're on a mission. Enough of you are carrying uh, instruments that you look in place. Um, and as you're getting closer to the stage, you see Scratch hit the corner. Uh, and then Scratch, are you going into the orchestra pit? Yeah, I'm going to dive into it. Like, All right, so <laughs> give me another acrobatics check. He's scurrying <laughs> along the front no. of the stage, like oh, below yeah. the stage. 24. And, 24, yeah, this time you got your feet just right. You're able to come up, and you actually do this tight little uh, flip, end over end, <laughs> and you land inside, uh, and you guys are walking up to the stage just as he jumps in. And Dunkirk, you're able to grab that tuba that's up there. Scratch, as you're there, you do see uh, what looks like it is a simple crawl space um, beneath the stage. Yeah. So what do you guys, now that you're there at the stage, how are you going to proceed? Oh, wait she went... She went through the crawl space. As Marissa, uh, as Marissa and two, three other performers went underneath. Everybody else kind of yeah. tucked stuff 
and is you can hear them jostling stuff around behind the curtains like they're they're just kind of putting stuff away for uh, the time being. There were a couple that went down through this crawl space. Yeah, so I, I figure I'm. I was hoping, like part of the performance check, just being like, "Hey, how's it going? Hey, do you mind grabbing that flute over there and and uh, and moving it back behind? Uh, you there? Uh, I need your help with the xylophone. Uh, I'm gonna take the tuba. It's got to go underneath. It's got to be serviced. So uh, this is we're the tuba servicers here. Yeah, most of these people, while they're listening to you and nodding, they're just focused on their job. They're just yeah, they're moving. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. We know this. We've done enough shows, but." They're they're just kind of they're not really taking your order, but they are not really being bothered by you. Yeah, so that. I'm I'm just gonna grab the tuba and then book it underneath. Okay. Everybody and else follow him underneath. Okay. So as you I guess open this hatch, I assume you're I don't want to yeah. lead you, but yeah. I guess you are. Um It it leads down. It goes there is a ladder that goes down and then from what you can tell there is uh it's kind of damp and dank once it gets down uh down at the floor that you can see. You guys going down the ladder? Yep. Twig's gonna enjoy this. Twig's oh yeah. <laughs> She's meditating right now. So as you guys descend this ladder, it's it's probably like fifteen feet down. You see a long winding passage, uh roughly cut stone slowly <laughs> meanders in this downward slope. Uh, gently easing in a northeasterly direction. Sconces on the wall hold flickering torches, and the ground is damp with moisture. The passage winds into darkness with two stone archways leading to other chambers on the western side. That would be your left. Faint music can be heard coming from one of the rooms. So you said that was music different. coming from the room? Yeah, there's faint music. Uh, there are two archways probably 15, 20 yards ahead. And you can hear some music coming from one of one of those rooms, and they are on the left hand side. And floor is like stone. Yeah, it's stone, carved stone. Okay. Uh, it it looks refined. Uh, it is a little damp and dank just because you are now down underneath the uh, underneath the surface. Uh, I'm gonna head to the music. Okay. I would like to look and see. Does like, do I see like power cables or anything running around? Just to get an idea of where those cables run to. Yeah, you can, you can give me a perception check and scratch. You can give me one too as you're approaching this door. Oh, natural twenty. Oh. Uh, perception. So twenty one. Okay. Not mine's not as good. Mine is a twelve. Okay. Uh, you don't see any like power down here. You do see the sconces that. Uh, torch light that that uh, run this uh, the hallway here okay. um, and with that perception check you hear the music playing even more and it is this very rhythmic kind of thing uh, Lyra since you are truly a bard uh, no nah, never mind we'll wait sorry <laughs> jump in the gun uh, but Floon you do hear uh, behind that music you hear shuffling of feet and some grumbling Kind of like, and then some shuffling of the feet moving around. I'm gonna go follow the music. Okay, I, I imagine Scratch is just slightly ahead of you, and uh, as you peek in through the door, uh, the first archway just has this open. Um, it has no door. Instead, there's just this archway that opens into this lavishly decorated chamber with a round vaulted ceiling. Hanging from finely crafted wooden racks along three walls is a collection of musical instruments. A plush carpet covers the floor and expensive furniture fills several corners. What stands out is a small window into the room next door, barred like a jail cell. Three men sit in the center of the room playing one of the most beautiful pieces of music you've ever heard. The playing skips slightly as you enter the room and pop your heads in. And the serene looks upon the faces of these musicians vanish. It seems odd that one of them continues to play with a nervous look to the window. While the other two quickly stop their performance and produce deadly weapons before advancing. And that's where we need to roll some initiative. Floon, you see these two men as you kind of uh, peek your head in over the shoulder of Scratch. These two men s drop their instruments. And one of them says, you keep playing. And he says that to the other guy that just keeps, he's, keep, he's fluting. Uh, and the other two draw their swords and start to make their way towards you with aggressive looks in their eyes. 
What you want to do, Flume? Um. So, I, so how are we like positioned? So you said I'm behind him. Yeah. Uh, so Scratch? I imagine Scratch and you kind of went around the corner to look in, and as soon as they saw you, they uh, okay. they got up and drew their weapons. So you're not quite in the room yet. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna pull out my repeat rapier. Rapier. Repair, sorry. Uh, and I'm going to uh, just walk in um, and just be like, "What's the problem? You are not. You should not be down here. I'm part of the maintenance crew. I'm going to show my burned hands. I just got fried. Give me a give me a deception check. Ouch, seven. Yeah, he's like, that's bullshit. Turn around now. No, I'm good. Okay. He's I'm just gonna stay and stand where I am and I don't know if I can prepare an action in case you he attacks me. But I yeah, want to you can if he approaches you, you're gonna you're going to strike. That's what I would like to okay. do. Alright. Lyra, you hear Floon uh trying to negotiate with them and you heard that he's calling bullshit. You are you're a couple feet back, you haven't quite made it around into the corner of the room yet. So you can't see the people in there, but you can hear them. Uh, so, first time at D&D, not first time to uh, tabletop, um, but um, is there any benefit to confusing the hell out of an enemy? Are you you talking like spell-wise? Uh, no, I'm talking like I'm going to pull out the pan flute and go at it with the guy who's playing behind them. Uh, you could give me, give me a, give me an insight check. Okay. And we'll see, because I, I, th I think what you're trying to do... At least, I mean, fellow DMs here, correct me if I'm wrong. If the persuasion or intimidation check from Floon would have passed, I think this might work. But I think since he's already, like, called bullshit on it, it's just without magical means, playing a, playing an instrument for him, probably not going to, to sway them. So should I still roll insight, or...? Uh, no, I gave it to you. Like, okay, okay. I, I okay. think it's well okay. enough okay. that you heard in his voice that he's like, bullshit time to leave I, uh yeah i think how i would do it is if it's multiple times to like either intimidate or persuade to stop the check becomes really high yeah because they become more and more aggressive towards you and it becomes harder and harder to reason with yeah and i will say I, they're uh, kind of peeling back the curtain a little bit already their disposition is to protect and to not really take much so the dc is already pretty high as far as uh, any kind of persuasion. You are kind of getting deep in the depths of uh, the motley here. So there, there shouldn't be people down here that they don't know. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and I'm behind, so they can they can see me. They have line of sight to me. Is that right? Uh, no, not yet. They okay. only see Floon and uh, Scratch. Okay, and these look like me. I'm sorry. Are These look like maintenance people? Or? Uh, well... You can you can move forward and get a get a look if you'd like. Uh, I want to use one of my spells, disguise self. Okay. Um, and I want to turn into. God, I don't know. Um, one of the like lesser actors. Okay. Like not one of the top tier actors, but totally like, they were at least on the play. Okay. okay. All right. Like like Billy Zane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah Billy I turned Zane into Billy Zane. Zane. Titanic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, you cast Disguise Self, and, and before your eyes, uh, Twig and uh, Dunkirk, you see Lyra turn into the majestic Billy Zane. Uh, you are wearing the clothes of uh, some of the stage actors there. You look like you just came off the stage. You got a little bit of sweat on your uh, on your brow. Cool, perfect. Uh, and then I'll just, um, I guess, like walk out and be like, mm, what are you guys doing here? What are you, what's going on? Well, we're, you know what we're, he looks at you and he recognizes you. You know what we're doing. We're, we have to play for these damn invalids next door. And uh, if we stop playing, all hell's going to break loose. Who are these people? Why are they with you? They're uh, interns. And uh, they usually take my coffee order, but that's why I asked you the question, because if I ask you questions, then they get to hear it from, you wow. know, straight from the horse's mouth, you know? So it's really more like a method, not acting, but like method learning kind of thing. So that's yeah. why, 
Yeah. All right. Uh, give me give me a deception check. Can I pull out my pan flute to help, like, bring it like full circle <laughs> into like this is this yeah. is real. Well, g- give me a deception check with advantage because you got the pan flute coming in behind you. <laughs> So that means you just roll your d20 twice and you take the better of the two rolls. Oh, nice. Okay. And you said that was a, a deception? Yeah, deception, since you are you are fibbing a little. Maybe a little bit. Okay, so that would be a 16. Okay. Yeah, he's... I, I don't know why you're asking me all these questions. This is... Uh, you, you've, you've walked past us every single time after every show. You know where the tents are that you keep following the path. Uh, quit bothering us. We we have a job. I don't bother you on stage. I guess I just wanted to make more friends. Well, <laughs> I, I yeah, you take your friends. Yeah, just, yeah. I I probably don't have to tell you this, but just remember when you get to the door, you got to play the song or else you get electrocuted. It just yeah. seems like you forgot something, so I want to make sure you know that. Yeah, there was like this uh, this thing that happened backstage, like uh, just a, well, I won't bore you with the details, but it Please involved a, a bass drum. Um, <laughs> but uh, right. yeah, I kind of hey. conked my noggin. Can you uh, tell me what what song you're talking about? It she has a serious concussion going on well, there, if you haven't noticed. I really you should might... go see a doctor. Yeah, you might want somebody else to play the song. The notes are written on the on the wall. You just have to play the notes and the door opens. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the notes on the, the wall. Yeah. The notes on the wall. Oh, man. I, yeah. Boy, is there egg on my face. <laughs> <laughs> and you see them sheathe their, their, their short swords and they go back to take their... Uh, and we'll be out of initiative. We rolled that for nothing. Uh, no, they go back and no, take their seats no. and pick up their, their instruments and they start playing again. And you hear that shuffling and the groaning kind of pick up a little bit more in the in the room next door. Sorry, Twig, no combat for you. <laughs> and he's like, you know the way. And then he's pointing down the rest of the path. I sure do, friend. And And he just he he goes back to playing. <laughs> Do you guys, what do you guys think that, uh, that weird shuffling, like, groany thing is? So as you are continuing down the path, I assume, Mm -hmm. you see, uh, next door to the, the open archway that you were just negotiating in, you see jail cell bars, and inside you see 12 zombies that are, are, uh, kind of seduced in a way. They are just kind of ambling, not really moving a whole lot. But they are, uh, they, it's like they're listening to the music almost. They are, they are sedated in a way. Oh my God. Is this like, are you setting it up for like a thriller kind of thing? To have <laughs> they, are, so. they are I definitely am... going to dance. They are they're practicing their like... dance number. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I but they, they are not looking aggressive towards you as you pass by that door. They are, uh, they are, like I said, sedated in a way. So I could be wrong, but these look like zombies, but they could also be, um, could also be seniors from the academy. It's hard to say, really. They look like my mother-in-law. <laughs> from what you've told me about your mother-in-law, yes, they, they certainly do. Sound like her, too. Can you do your impression of her again? I love it. Yeah, she kind of sounds like... Oh, Dunkirk, what are you going to do something with your life? Are you taking care of my little Bessie? It was like, it was like that. That's just really good. I'm like, you're like in wizarding school, right? Is that yeah, I'm doing? going to the night I'm school. Going. I'm going to the <laughs> yeah. night school for wizarding. Uh, just want to, you know, do something else with my life. Uh, yeah. Done all I can in the plastering and the roofing world. Yeah, well, if that doesn't work out, I think you would be like a really good like puppeteer, just like little puppets and you could make one of like your in-law and like you could just like fight them out like you have the perfect voice for it like a ventriloquist kind of thing yeah uh dunkirk and bessie dunkirk and bessie uh, I, that sounds like a winner i think that's i think that that's that's very very good if you want to make that into a play i'll help you write it <laughs> <laughs> at the end of this conversation you, you make, make it to this the end of this hallway you you kind of meander back and forth uh, and you make it to uh, the end of the hallway, and there's this huge stone disc that sits in front of you, and on it are some uh, musical notes 
that you uh, you assume are the ones that he asked you to say. Um, and he, he, he had told you to play them to open the disc. And is that what you guys want to do? I, af- after you, Lyra. Well, Scratch, we're such a good duo. I think that... Uh, should we play it together? I think we should. Okay. All right. <laughs> and for the yeah. polo. Give me, per- give me a performance check. Both of it, what you can do one separately, or you can roll with an advantage. That's up to you. Uh, my performance modifier is one hundred. Not good. <laughs> so if you want to roll with advantage, that would probably be best. Yeah. Okay. Oh yikes! Good thing we have advantage. Oh yikes! Uh, it's a ten. Oh, that's just enough. As you start to, oh, you both kind of, you start off rough. Like you're, you're kind of, uh, somebody hitting sync. key, right? <laughs> Go ahead, scratch whatever you can say. I was going to say out of sync. <laughs> yeah. So you guys kind of, you finally like halfway through the notes, you match up. And by the time you hit that long and you hold that last note, the stone disc starts to move and roll out of the way. And as, as you look outside, you are now on the banks of one of the rivers that surrounds uh, the, uh, the central island that you are up on. Uh, and you see campfires twinkling out in the distance. You see um, probably about 100 yards is where the campfire light stops. So they're, they're, you're heavily shadowed at this point in the evening up to that, to that point, which is about 60 feet away from the uh, the tents. Hey, uh, Floon, uh, if I remember, you're uh, you're pretty good at sneaking around, aren't you? I generally am. Not so good back there, but generally I'm much better than that, yes. Uh, perhaps it behooves us to try and maybe sneak ahead a little bit and see what's going on. Maybe try and get a glimpse of something. Feel better than just kind of rushing in and jumping in since we've got Zambies and stuff to worry about. <laughs> Sounds like a smart move, boss. I'm good for it. All right. Uh, start trying to sneak ahead just to kind of get a better look at the camp. All right. Give me uh, give me a stealth check as you're moving forward. Uh, stealth check is a 22. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're able to kind of like, there's enough tufts of grass that kind of stick up. You're bouncing in and out. <clears throat> uh, you get up to the, uh, the edge of that firelight and you're behind a pretty big boulder. Uh, and what you see, you see, um, you see about six or seven tents. Two of them seem to stand out more than the others. The rest are are smaller. Uh, there's five tents that are of a normal size or matching size, and then uh, beyond that, there are two that are a little bigger, and they have some uh, flags, bigger flags that are flying um, over the top of them. That was five total. Seven total. Two of seven them total. are of of normal stature, uh, and then. Five mm-hmm. of them are of normal stature. Two of them are larger. Yep. Okay. And you do see at the campfire, you do see a bunch of people uh, gathered around. Uh, can I tell if any of them look important, um, like from the show or anything or anything? Yeah, about give me them? a give me a perception check. That is uh, eighteen. Yeah. So you do see, uh, it's it's the cast and crew mostly uh, gathered around. Uh, in this half circle around the fire, and you do see one person that looked like the the main stage manager uh, from uh, after immediately after the show ended. That was kind of directing people around. You see him kind of isolated, standing by himself across the fire pit. Okay. Did anybody else follow me down there, or was I on my own? I think you're lonesome. Okay, I will head back to okay. meet up with Dunkirk yeah. and let them know what I found: the seven tents, the two large ones, and the stage manager at the fire with everybody else i'd so be very interested just keep carrying these instruments into the camp wow. i don't mm. think that's probably very smart at this point well, mm. she did i, like I would be crew, so yeah that... that's kind of what i was thinking would that perception check have shown me like any instruments or anything around the fire uh, no anybody? it no instruments in their hand are just flagons of ale and everybody's drinking and and kind of dancing a little little ditty around the fire and like i said that one person is is kind of by himself not not like isolated withdrawn but but seeming like getting ready to uh to address the crowd 
Okay. Uh, I don't think the instruments are a good idea. Nobody else had any down there. It just looks like a party. I think that'd make us stand yeah. out and draw attention. Rad. Okay. Um, Lyra, how how long are you going to look like uh the the actors? That's a that's a that's an excellent question, Dunkirk. I was actually going to ask um ask the universe that question. How long uh, does that? I, <laughs> I, I, I Dear God, how long does this spell last? <laughs> Gonna, it lists, it lasts one hour. One hour? Yeah. One yeah, hour. So you, yeah, you got you're about fifteen minutes in. About an about yeah, like like probably like another like three fourths of a of a bell or something like that. Uh it would suck if like the guy actually like came face to face with me. He'd be like, Whoa <laughs> You know, and I'd be like, Ah <laughs> This is embarrassing, but um <laughs> Yeah, to answer so, your question for like forty-five minutes. Yes. So what what I'm thinking is, I mean, it worked pretty well last time. Like, hey, we're just some of your friends, and we're interns here, and and you're trying to get us into the to the understudy program, and uh, maybe while we walk up to the fire, we all kind of give a quick little scan around and see if we see uh see the person you're impersonating. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yes, and maybe, like, I think definitely we should keep the instruments, like, not visible, but keeping them, like, in our back pocket or satchel or whatever, so that we can pull them out for, uh, you know, maybe, like, a later deception kind of thing or whatever. Um, that, right? that might be a good idea. <laughs> Perfect. Since I borrowed your flute, I'll give it back to you, and if anybody asks, that's mine, and I'm just very forgetful. All right, that sounds good to me. And um, yeah, okay, so let's see. You're all interns trying to get you into the understudy program. Uh, because you're interns, you might be asked this, like I take my coffee black, so. What about tea? Uh, I don't drink tea, which now that I'm thinking about it might be why I don't know what peaceful means. I mean, there's a chance. Her teas do give you a very distinct feeling of euphoria. What happens when you mix? Victoria. What happens when you mix one of Scratch's muffins with one of the teas? Because one's like an upper and the other's a downer. Like, what is that like? I mean, the muffins definitely the upper. <laughs> no, the muffins are definitely not. <laughs> muffins really are terrible. So the tea's good though. Well, I mean, I got a, I got a whole host of customers back home. That's fine. It's he not really for doesn't. Everybody. Scratch, do you use sugar? I'm sorry? Do you use sugar in your muffins? I, I, nope, I, I use all natural honey. No sugar products in these. Um, these are all natural for you. You don't use none of that sugar. It's just honey and some uh, fermented cow's milk. Mm. Mm. It really bind, binds it all together. He prefers his muffins kind of salty. It's a savory kind of muffin. It's a savory muffin, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you guys want? Do you guys want one? I'm good, thanks. No, thank you. I uh, do it the first time, not again. You know what? I think it'll be good uh, to have in case, like, mm -hmm. I need to poison. I mean, yes, I'd love one, please. That'd be wonderful. Okay. Yeah, pull pull another one out. <laughs> okay. Thank you. This one. this one is my last oat muffin. Oats, oats. Okay, that's what that is. Okay, thank you. It's totally just oats. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pocket lint. Your oats. Your oats. All right, so currently you guys are still outside of the firelight. Uh, I imagine where you guys are making your way closer. Downtown. Under under the guise of uh, Billy, <laughs> Billy Zane here, um, and you guys are the interns. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what? How, how do you want to approach? You got tents kind of strewn about. You got a, a big fire pit, people around it, uh, drinking, having a good time, celebrating. Maybe we should act like we're celebrating with them. Like do a little like, and a little, like, you know? Really a little good. jig kind of thing. <laughs> That's really smart. Yeah. I think we should. Like Maybe like, act like we're, we're drinking with them and stuff. A little popping and locking. Wait, what is a pop and what is a lock? Uh, I will attempt to show her what popping and locking is. 
<laughs> All right, what is uh, Dunkirk's version of Pop and Lock look like? So I think he just kind of, kind of like swings his arms around, and and uh, there's some definite popping of joints oh. and stuff uh, while he's doing it. And it's one of these, and uh, and you twirl, and yeah, popping and locking. That's what Wait, the kids are into these days. Dunkirk, have you seen that thing where that they do that like they put a towel like that looks like a towel? Do you know how to do that? <laughs> Oh, you're talking about the flossing. Yeah, like I yeah, should my, never my get idiot, it right. My my idiot son <laughs> thinks it's funny to to call me a noob and and do that flossing dance, and I don't get it. <laughs> Floon, can you floss it? I've got floss in my bathroom back home. I just get it getting. Gotta keep those teeth clean. So give me, <laughs> as you guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push you into this, uh, this part here. Uh, as you guys are trying to integrate yourself with these people, give me performance checks all around, and uh, let me know what you guys get. Yeah, baby, eighteen. Eighteen. 18. Minus. One. Oh, negative. oh no. 17. So seventeen. Yeah. Eighteen. I'm sorry. What was the check? Performance. Uh, performance. See, perform all. Eight. It's 21. Ooh, 21. I rolled a three. Flurry, you're really bad at flossing. <laughs> all right. I love, I really, this is why I love group DC checks, because uh, three pass and two fail is, uh, that's a positive. So you guys are uh, kind of popping and locking with uh, <laughs> Billy Zane, uh, a.k.a. Lyra Lyons, <laughs> leading the way. And these people at this point are... They're, they're a little tipsy, and they are just open arms accepting all of you as you kind of come into this fireplace. Um, uh, Lyra, give me a perception check as you... Because uh, I, I, I assume you are leading the group here into uh, this... Uh... Yeah, I was going to ask, um, Twigwamp, you're pretty tall and have like a good vantage point. Do you see like the real Billy Zane anywhere around here? Get some real Back to the Future Marty McFly <laughs> stuff here. <laughs> Do I see him? Uh, give me a perception check. Lyra, you can give me one too. Or anyone that really wants to kind of look around and now that you're within the firelight. Oh, ow. 16. Oh, nice. 21. 16? 9. Uh, 7. Uh, 18 for me. I'm using my daughter's dice, and these clearly are the dice to use from now on. Nice. Uh, steal scratch? Them. Just steal them. 21. All right, so Scratch, Floon, or not Floon, sorry. Scratch, Twig, and uh, Dunkirk. You you don't see Billy, the real Billy Zane, but you do see uh, those bigger tents. There are some smaller fires burning inside of them, and they are, as you're looking in, like, through the open flaps of all these tents, uh, some people are sleeping in some of them, but in those bigger ones, they have their own personal fire. And there's, there are some carpets down on the ground, much Ooh. like the one that you saw in the room before. They're a little more lavishly furnished. But as you guys are kind of looking around, getting kind of like, oh shit, is this really happening? The man uh, who was the stage manager kind of clings on the side of his uh, tankard. And he starts uh, to say, Tonight, my fellow fools, tonight, before the rising sun, indeed, at the very stroke of midnight, all of Bard's Gate shall bow before your beloved Lady Asmarissa, and we shall be the rulers of this wretched city. As we speak, Asmarissa is preparing the final components of the ritual at the Motley. And as he says those words, you see these uh, this shadowed figure with these huge wings start to flap and leave up towards the moon and head back to the Motley, up through the air. They call it King's Bridge for a reason, lads. Soon Our Lady Asmarissa will climb atop the auditorium and lay her enchantment upon the great idol at its peak. One song from its silver strings and everyone in the city will be hers and ours to command. So raise your glasses to the fools who became kings. And everybody raises their glasses, everybody's saying, for Asmarissa and everybody's drinking and, and kind of embracing you guys as you are now part of the group. I'm doing it the too. crowd of oh, Rasmarissa. Oh, this is bad. Asma 
Larissa wouldn't do that. She's like too like beautiful and talented to do that. She wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. I don't believe that she, Edna as Larissa would do that. <laughs> The, the effects of the show are still showing in uh, <laughs> Lyra. I rolled up on her. <laughs> so what do you guys, what do you guys want to do? You caught the, the shadow of that figure leaving and uh, he, he dropped a few words in there. He going to the silver harp and that's a building in the bridge district that uh, has this big silver harp on it that a few plucks of the string is I going where to. Where they got uh, their name from. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm into the out. dude. I'm into the party and the cheering. And I'm like for as Marissa. And yeah, and people like embrace you and are like, yeah, she's great, isn't dude, she? Dude, I'm handing out muffins left and right too. Like, <laughs> yeah, these are fucking great. Oh no, <laughs> eating them, man. That's how they you all know. can't make it to like the final step because they all have explosive diarrhea. Yeah, I was wondering <laughs> how many restrooms there are out here in this field. <laughs> I guess when you're in a field, the whole world's your restroom. <laughs> you know when you're like super drunk and like really terrible convenience store food, it's like the best? That's what these muffins are. Yes. And so they're like, loving it. Like White Castles or Taco it's, Bell. Yeah, dude, these are like <laughs> hey, they're Everybody's mouth drunk. starts to get dry like, that you give them muffins to and they're just like... And then they're just like, like drinking crumbs. as much as they can. <laughs> oh, it's like keto food. I got it. Like, yeah, crumbs on their shirts. <laughs> so, what do you guys want to do? Are you going to stay and enjoy this uh, this raucous event, or are you going to follow the trail of Lady, what seemingly is Lady Asmarissa, flying up through the air towards uh, the the Silver Harp? No, I don't so I, I want to. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. You I was going to say, I, I, the, the speech that the stage yeah. manager gave, he said that she was heading back to the Motley. Yes. To Which, and the, the Silver Harp is right next door. Okay, all yeah. right. Okay, that's what was, because I'm like, wait a minute. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss here. Um, yeah, yeah, so she, if... So she's going to climb atop the auditorium, which is... Uh, to be honest, this is where it kind of gets convoluted in the story here that it's not real clear, but it's going to be in the auditorium on top is that big silver harp. And he's saying a few plucks of those strings and all of Bard's Gate will be under her uh, her charmed spell. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so if uh, whoever's near me, uh, Twiggy, if you're near me, uh, I'm going to, oh, this is this is bad. We gotta, we gotta grab the group. We gotta go now. Uh, to Lady Asmarissa, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I think we need to put a little uh, scoot in our boots and get going there. Okay, yeah, yeah. and and we'll kind of uh, fast track montage some of the shit. You guys head back the way you came. You're you're running, hustling, kind of drinking and eating muffins as you go. Uh, maybe getting a little uh, a flute play in there. You go back through the tunnel, run past the the three guys. They're still playing. They're kind of like. Seeing you guys run past, up and through, you go into the Motley. You go backstage, up the ladder. <laughs> I'm leading you guys. And you are now on the roof. And you see four buildings down. You see uh, this this winged, winged succubus getting Ooh. just getting close to landing next to that big silver harp. <clears throat> are the buildings How? like jumping distance? Yeah, so they're they're as speak? you're up there in oh. How far away? I'll wait for uh, uh, Lyra here Brittany. to get back in. Okay, as you are up there now, you see uh, that there are a couple ways you can make it across. One, you can you could jump. They're about ten feet apart. These buildings. There are some clothes lines that that attach uh, that are attached on each side, so you could go hand over hand. Uh, but there, yeah, there there are four buildings. Three buildings in between you and the final, uh, where she is just getting ready to land. Parkour. I'm parkouring, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, so if you want to leap, give me an acrobatics check. If you want to take the clotheslines, you'll give me an athletics. 18. Nat 20. All right. I'm going to take the clotheslines. Pass, pass. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with the uh, the clothesline. I rolled what said was, uh, two. Athletics for clothesline? Yep. Uh, that is a 13 for me. I've got a three. Are you jumping or are you clotheslining? Uh, doesn't matter. Are you dexterous <laughs> or, or, or strong? Uh, I would be jumping. 
Bye. And Flynn? <laughs> oh, sorry. I was going to do the clothesline with a with a nice beautiful yeah. two. 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 All right. So, uh, give me... Ah, shoot. Can I try and catch her with my staff? Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm going to ask. So, would that be a deck save on your part or on her part? It would be on both, I would okay. say. So yeah, he's got to do strength, I would as think. As you're in front, and I'll say Floon or uh, Scratch and... Uh, Twig, you guys jump across first. Uh, Lyra, you're a little hesitant for whatever reason that usually they the land and see you. They land first and then turn around and look at you. And uh, they see you slip and and Scratch is going to stick out his uh, his uh, staff. So give me uh, deck saves on, on both of your part. And that's uh, a 20, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be a d20 and I believe you'll add two if not more. Yes. Can't remember. Okay, so that's a thirteen for me. Okay, yeah. So, uh, scratch. You're able to just land, turn, and swing out your staff. And as you're kind of slip and fall, Lyra, you're able to grab the top of it, and he he kind of pulls you up quick enough, and you are there. Uh, <laughs> on the other side, taking the clothesline, Dunkirk. You're about halfway through, halfway across, and you feel Floon grab on, and that <laughs> that rope starts to bow. Both of you give me uh, give me a strength save. Both of you, since you're you're on athletic. See, and it starts. I should finish my thought here. It starts to bow and it snaps that rope, and you guys are now kind of swinging towards the building. John McLean's John McLean, yeah, John McLean style. Tom, Tom McLean. I, I I roll I rolled a natural one. You guys, <laughs> and I rolled an eight. You guys, <laughs> bye. <laughs> So as you are are swinging down, you hit the side of the building and you fall down. <laughs> Home and now you are, style. The, you are on the ground. The rope was long enough that you don't take any any fall damage, but you are now on the ground. This should take uh, all the damage. You are now dead. It's a three player game. <laughs> you three that are up there, you guys can make the next checks uh, well yeah. enough that you are able to approach Lady Asmursa as she is landing at this harp. Uh, the two on the ground. How do you want to get back up? Is there a fire oh, escape or anything? Oh, hang hang on a second, there. I got a better idea. Um, it, it was four buildings ahead, right? Yeah. All right. Um, could we on the ground run over? You know, run the four buildings okay. and see if we can find the way up yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, you 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 beat feet on the street. Man, that's pretty good. <laughs> you beat feet on the street, and you make it to that building. You know, it's got the big silver harp on top. It's uh, it's easy to pick out. You're able to bust inside, and now you're taking some flights of stairs. You're you you're a little bit behind everybody else, but you are you are making your way up to the top. All right, yeah. you three. As you are there, uh, as you step foot on this this building with the silver harp, she lands, and with a thud, and kind of some lightning starts to crackle in the sky around you, and she says, as uh. You leap there. She says to the three of you, You're too late. Bard's gate is mine, and its people will worship me as the goddess I am. You shall be the first sacrifice made in the name of Asmarissa, succubus queen of Bard's gate. Indeed, I already have worshippers among you. Her jade eyes suddenly darken to a blood red color, and horns break from her forehead to make her already disgusting body even worse she offers you a warrior salute with her sword and takes a duelist stance and that's where we're going to roll initiative as you are engaging you guys rolled way better than she did uh floon you are in the stairwell heading up okay uh you you can't get to the top in with just your normal movement you can dash and make it just to the uh, to the hatch going up. I'll do that. Okay. Dash it all the way to the top. Yeah, so you get just to the hatch. You open it, and as you look up and in, you're not on the roof yet, but you see you see uh, Lady Asmarissa in her duelist stance, in, in her ugly succubus form, and you see your three compatriots up there uh, engaging as well. Dunkirk, same, same kind of goes for you. Do you have 30 feet or 25? I have 25. Okay. Yeah, you'll make it right behind Floon if you uh, 
if you do your dash action. Uh, yeah, I'll do I'll do the dash action. Okay. I think I'm huffing and puffing behind him. Okay. Shouldn't have had that second nacho. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Twig, uh, you are face to face with this uh, this this uh, evil being. I mean, you sound like a pretty rad person, but I don't think that that's what we're supposed to let happen. So I think you probably should stop and I'm going to attempt to charm her. So I'm going to do charm person and she has to be within 30 feet of me. And then she makes a wisdom saving throw of 13. You're going to charm the charmer. I'm going to charm the charmer. All right. A wisdom throw of 13. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a 14. <laughs> Just saves. All right. Lyra. So... Before we go, go to further, are we Lyra, Scratch, and Twig melee with her right now? No, you're you're within like thirty feet, just okay. just enough to. Cool. Yeah, yeah, no melee yet. Lyra. Uh, yeah. So I'm. Um, I uh, yes, I, I just going off of what uh, Twig One Pierre said. Uh, you're you're great, and um, can I have your autograph? Just real quick before we start. There is no time for that now. There's always time for autographs, right? Right? Please. No. <sighs> well, so it, was, it was worth a... And I pull out my crossbow, and I'm going to, like, aim it at the harp strings. Okay. And I'm going to say, shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so you're trying to shoot the, the strings. Yeah, I'm trying to sever them. All right. I, we'll say there there are seven strings on this harp, so go ahead and uh, give me a, an attack roll with your with your crossbow. Okay, okay, I've got seventeen. Yeah, so that's going to hit one of the okay. strings. Uh, okay. Now you roll damage. So roll a d six, and you're going to add your uh, you're going to add your dex, which is two. Okay, six. All right, so six damage on that that harp string, and it comes through and it severs one of them, and it snaps up and. The... And uh, there are six harp strings left. Uh, you have movement. You have a bonus action. Uh, I'm going to move away from her because I don't want to be hit because I'm a bard. Okay. And I'm made of straw. So you're kind of at the edge of the building. She's in the center of it. You can move uh, towards the corner, back corner of the building. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is there like a way that... Is there a place I can move where like she doesn't have the opportunity to enviro kill me? Um, there's there's not much up here. You can separate yourself from your group and kind of get some space in between you. But there's there's no real uh, other than going back to other buildings. There's nothing to hide okay. behind up here on this. Okay, place. I'm fine where I'm at then. And uh, okay. if she boops, she boops. Okay. All right, scratch. You're oh. within thirty feet. How far away is uh, Floon and Dunkirk? You see Floon's head sticking up out of. The uh, the hatch that is a uh, thirty feet behind uh, as Marissa, which is sixty feet from you. All right. Well, I'm gonna go into melee. This ends well. Charge in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This ends well. So I'm going to unarm strike. Okay. Which is a sixteen to hit. That hits. One d four. Seven. Okay, seven points four of damage. Three. And then I'm going to use a key oh. to patient defense. So oh, that nice means stunning. they have um, disadvantage. disadvantage. Yeah. On an attack. Okay. Yep. So yeah, as you come in and you you crack her right in the rib with one of your punches, she she winces a little bit, gives you a little wink, a little smile. Uh, it's now as Marissa's turn. She's going to take that uh, not very kindly, and she's going to. Take her sword and, and swipe down on you. Scratch. That's uh that's a twenty-three to hit. With disadvantage? Oh, with this who yeah, try that Good again, reminder. My friend. Oh, I think that's still gonna work. That's a twenty. Uh, yeah. Weird. That is six slashing damage coming down on you as a sword comes slicing okay. through into you. Uh and that is all. She only has one attack. What a loser. <laughs> what a loser. All right, Wait, Floon. Interrupt. You see Scratch come up and uh, take a punch and then a, uh, an attack from the sword of Lady Asmarissa. What would you like to do? You are 30 feet away uh, with your head 
only exposed. Only your head exposed. 30 feet away. I mean, that's close enough for me to get within melee range. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> uh, hop out. Okay. Use my full distance to... Go opposite of me. Run at her. I will... Yeah, I, mean, I don't care where which particular position, so I'll go opposite of okay. of scratch. Flanking, um, running. I will have ta taken my rapier out, and I'm gonna attack her with it. Okay. Uh, so let me. Where did my die go? Oh gosh, that is a 19 plus my. That hits. Yeah, it's, it definitely hits. So just um, so you know, when you're opposite of somebody in melee, you're flanking. Yeah, so you, you do get. Advantage. get advantage if you want to try to get that natural 20. Um, so you can roll again. It doesn't hurt. No, definitely not. <laughs> okay. All right, <laughs> so the 19 seven. hits? Yes. Um, right. So that is 1d8 plus 3. D8 is 8 plus 3 is 11. Do you have any movement left? Uh, no. I think, I have, yeah, if left. you're at 30, you're tapped. Yep. Alright, so you have a bonus action. Um... You choose to do so. Uh, let's see. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. No, I think I'm good. Thank you, though. Okay. Dunkirk. You see uh, Floon take off out of the hatch. Um, yeah, sorry, I forgot about sneak attack, which if I have advantage... Yeah. Would give me an additional 1d6. Okay. Do it. Five. So that's a total Ooh. of 16. Okay. I'm melting her. Damn. <laughs> That's it. Sorry. All right, Dunkirk. So uh, I'm going to come up the steps. And as I come, I'm kind of like, I've pulled out my, my wizard spell book. And I'm, oh, it's, oh, uh, this is, uh, what is it? My textbook for my course. And I'm like, oh, look, see here. Uh, f uh, Featherfall. No, that won't do anything. Uh, silent image. No. Uh, identify. What the? Identifies useless. Oh, a magic <laughs> missile! And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to blast up, off. Uh, I'm going to blast uh, off magic missiles. I'm going to actually. I'm, I thought that was just going to show the spell. I want to roll my dice. Okay. Okay. So that, is that four? That is one d four plus one times. But is it three what? missiles three or four? Okay, yeah, three darts. So and let's you, see you here. roll individually for each one. Individually okay. for each right. one. Well, it's. I mean, that's. DM's rule. Some people yeah, say no, you one times three. Okay. Uh, first one is one, so that's two. Uh, second one is a three, so that's four. And the third is a four, so that's five. So 11 total. So five plus three plus two. That's ten. Okay. Okay. Yeah, these... What color are your uh, magic missiles? Um... I mean, I'm I'm still learning here, so I think they come out kind of like a dull brown color. Um, <laughs> flying turds. They're not they're not very flashy yet. Gross. Yeah, and they 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 two of them pelt her wings and just, and then two of them are able to connect with her torso right in her back over uh, uh, Flint's head. Anything else you'd like to do there, Dunkirk? Um, I'd like to get within fifteen feet of her. And then I'd like to yell to uh, to Floon. Um, hey, after your next attack, I need you to move out of the way, okay? I'll turn back and just give him the thumbs up. You got it, buddy. So I just I, with that 15 feet of her, no closer. All right. How she you looking? do? She's looking. Yeah. She's seen better days. Okay. I don't know what the what the the five E version of she's bloodied. I just say bloodied. Bloodied. Yeah. yeah, she's got some chunks taken out of her. All right, Twig. I don't know about all this violence, so I'm just gonna, you know, maybe try to entangle her. So I'm gonna cast entangle, and she's gonna get entangled by weeds unless she can make a DC strength check of thirteen. Strength is not. <clears throat> it's twelve. So, be tangled. no, I read this one wrong. It says it's a 20 foot square starting from a point within my choice. So I don't want it to be anywhere where it'll be 
on our friends and then it turns it into difficult terrain in that area and then oh no she is restrained by plants and can can and can use its action to make a strength okay. check against your spell okay if, if it she frees herself she succeed if she succeeds she frees herself so she okay. is entangled okay I'm having a hard time picturing how you're not going to get uh, scratch and flume oh, super easy. in there. Because it's a 20 foot square. Mm hmm. And they're both engaged in melee with her, so it's going to be tough. Oh, are to... they? Yeah. Right there, I just did it on the screen. It's a diamond. She gets the bottom corner. Yeah, I mean. Look at you with your ge geometry skills. Does it have to be like on the ground, or can it be like. Yeah, at a place of your choosing. All right, so you want. So the, the way I normally do this, I would make that if they're trying to place that spell not like directly on a target, I would say give me an Arcana check just to see if you can command that part of your your spell casting. I mean the DC is relatively low, but and we're just sh shooting for uh, anything but a fail here. <laughs> oh no! Did you? I got a five. Oh shit. Plus three, uh, so I got an eight. <laughs> all right, eight. We'll we'll give that to you. You're able to kind of just throw it on the other side and get just a corner of this uh, <laughs> this these tangles and brambles that start to wrap up and around Lady Asmaris's legs, uh, and they are on the the edge and at the toes of both Floon and uh, and Scratch. So she she is now restrained. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Is that it, Twig? Yep, that's it. All right, Lyra, you see these twigs start to come up and, and embrace uh, as Marissa in this loving way. What would you like to do? Oh, God, I wish that were me. And then I... <laughs> um, am I able to get to the 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 harp? Yeah. Yeah, you can make it. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I'm going to use my... Um, let's say dagger to try to cut like more than one string okay. at a time. All right. If that's possible. Okay. Give me a, uh, give me an attack roll with your dagger. Okay. That's that is good. a 13. Add four. Add four to your roll. Oh, okay. So then that's a 17. Yeah. So 17, that that's going to hit the first one. Uh, I'll say if you do max damage, I'll get you, uh, you can get the second string as you're kind of slicing through them. Okay. So it's uh, 1d4 plus... 1d4 plus seven. 2. Okay. Or plus 2, yeah. 6. You got max <laughs> damage. So yeah, you're able to cut through one and just with that ease, ooh, you get two of them. So now two of those, two more of the seven. So three of the seven are down. And you see as that happens, you can see like her eyes just start to grow even a, a brighter red. And she, you can tell she's just like, her plan is being uh, foiled by... Uh, destroying those strings. Oh, she's looking at me. <laughs> uh, Scratch, you are at still in melee at the edge of some entanglement, but uh, uh, nothing is impeding you. At I'm the still opposite. Yeah, you're flanked with uh, with Flune there. All right, I'm gonna go just straight on arm strike. Okay. It's with advantage, right? Yeah, yeah, with the uh, flanking. An eight. And oh, and she's an restrained, so. Like eight or an eight. eight. Mother fudger. That's going to be a new. I'm going to use my last key point and do flurry of blows. Okay. Also, it's hilarious because he, she would have been restrained and he would have been like, oh, <laughs> and missed her <laughs> twice. Dude. <laughs> There's I, just too much going on. Too yeah. many muffins. Yeah. His peaceful side was taking over from being <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stomach cramps right as he punched. So, flurry, of, <laughs> flurry of blows is two more okay. uh, unarmed strikes. Okay. Nine, so advantage. 19. That one's going to hit. You can try well, for the... Also 24 or 16, okay. which... Right. Uh, 23. Hit. Or an 18. So... Right. So two two punches. 2 plus 3 is 5. And then 6, so 11 points of damage. 11 total? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, so as your first two punches miss, because she was kind of freaking out from the bramble. She's moving kind of wildly, and that's what made you miss. But then she kind of settles down, and you're able to crack two more in on her. Uh, yeah, she's she's looking ugly. Anything else, Scratch? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. So on her, she has to do a strength save to get out of this. Is that at the end of her turn? 
That she yeah. uses her action to make a strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's the action. Uh, and that's gonna be uh nope, that's a that's an eleven. Thirteen. So she's she's stuck there in these brambles and she's just saying, Damn it, damn it. Uh Floon. Uh so we're still f- Yep, I was gonna say we're still flanked, so I still have advantage, yep. yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we're gonna attack with my rep- 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 repair. Outside of a box, so that was uh nineteen. Nineteen hits. Uh, and that was a D8 plus 3. That's another 8 plus 3, so another 11. Woo! Woo! Okay. Still and standing. then we got a D6 for the sneak attack. 4. Okay. Uh, and then... Can I move away? Is that 15 feet now? Uh... You Ropes can. can take the dodge action, yeah, right? You as can, a bonus you, you action. You can use your bonus action to disengage. Okay. Or disengage, yeah. yeah. You don't necessarily. I mean, if you can get to the back side of her, you don't need to disengage if you don't want to. I mean, I just need you to. I just need you to step next to Scratch yeah. for a minute. Yeah, I guess I can go around it. the other way from the. I don't care. I'm going to disengage and get the hell out of there. I can disengage. Right. I'm going to do that just to get as far away from it as possible in case okay. it's a zero. Uh, I'm going to go the. I'm going to go 25. Dunkirk, what do you have up your sleeves? All right, I am going to flip through my uh, my my textbook, Wizarding 102. I got a B plus in 101, uh, and uh, I'm going to say, oh, okay. Uh, I did this for 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 my midterm, uh, and I'm going to cast uh, Burning Hands. Oof. It is a 15 foot cone in front of me, and fr- by my calculations, I don't. It's cut off. You don't. Yeah, you cut oh, it out there. I don't think anyone is in front of me. I, I'm not rolling. I'm not not rolling my dice in D in roll right, twenty. Right, I got you. So, yep. Uh, uh, on yeah, my I'll other, my other ca- yeah. Okay, on my other characters, when I click that. I just have it show the spell so everybody can read it. So I haven't set this dude up right. Um, but I believe this is... Oh, shit. There's cats fighting or loving outside my window. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, uh, so it says, Each creature in a 15-foot cone must make a deck saving throw. A creature takes 3d6 fire damage on a failed save or half as much on a success. The fire ignites any flammable objects in the area that aren't being worn or carried. Okay. Um, so deck so, save? A deck save, yes. Does she have disadvantage because she's restrained? I would think so. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a 9. My spell okay. save is 12. So 3d6? Yeah. You want me to roll? Yeah, go for it. I get to roll my my d6. I'm busting out all my dice. I don't ever get to roll because I'm dice. well because I mean in our, in our water deep game I'm a I'm a barbarian so it's pretty much just d20s the whole time. D12s. <laughs> Do it. Uh, so that's five, three, eight, and six. Ooh. So fourteen oh, points total? of damage. Uh, or fifteen points of damage. Yeah, so Dunkirk, how how do you want her to uh, to um, leave this world? Whoa! So uh, yeah, so as I'm flipping through my book, and I'm like, okay, all right, uh, I practice this one in mimid term, and uh, I'll you know say whatever words I say, and as I do, a, a flame that's bigger than I've ever been able to make before. I think it's, up until this point, I was probably just able to like light the fireplace with this. You know, or you know, a couple candles from a, from ten feet away, or something like that. A complete cone of flame just bursts from my hands and knocks me onto my ass. Uh, as the flames shoot forward, uh, is she is she wearing clothing? Uh, no, at this point she is like totally uh, in the nude in her okay. succubus form. Okay. Uh, yeah, so no clothing. You can send yeah. her hair. She's got some hair up. Eh? <laughs> that, that's terrible oh she's beautiful um so yeah so i think as this flame uh reaches her it kind of just starts swirling around her and sl- closes in on her as she starts screaming uh from the pain of the burning and uh eventually she falls down dead in a pile nice. 
All right. Yeah, so uh, Scratch, I... as this is swirling okay. around you, it's kind of like in your face as this fire is starting to eat her up. And uh, I imagine you're kind of trying to push it away. Twig, what were you, you going to say? I want to go up to Dunkirk and be like, man, you know how to light up. <laughs> did, did what what happened? I'm I saw I got knocked backwards. I'm gonna be like, did, did I did is she dead? Did 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 that work? Yeah, she's 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 gone. She's toast, yeah. She ends up like crumbling down in upon herself, and and nothing is left but ashes and two two uh, horns that are sitting on top of that pile. Well, I'll be fucked. I didn't think that was gonna work. That that so I only got a C plus on my midterm using that. That was <laughs> You're a genuine hero. That was amazing. Well now As... we know how you got that plus. <laughs> And as you guys are like kind of congratulating each other, the uh, the head of the liar guard that hired you to do this comes up, sword brandished. What, guys? We were just coming for uh, if you needed help. But it looks like you did the job. Yeah, we didn't need your help. Thanks, you are man. fine. Uh, no, you did not need our help then, I guess. Uh, Go home. I, I mean, so. you hired us for a reason, right? We're the best. There's no job too small, no job too big. No job too mean, no job too fluffy. That, that is true, but I did not think uh, that it was going to come to blows so fast. Uh, we saw you dancing up here, and uh, we saw these brown lights kind of fluttering around. We did not know what was happening, and we ran. And here you are. We found yeah. you, and you guys, you guys are uh, the, the saviors, I guess. I guess. Yes, you should pay us more. Yeah, yes, we do so owe you some let's money. Talk, we'll do... Let's talk hazard pay. We also incur uh, business expenses. Oh, these are all things that uh, are negotiable, I assume. Uh, 20, 20 gold apiece was was what we uh, talked about. And you want yeah, hazard going to need more than that. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, you didn't tell us we were going to be fighting a dang succubus there. Uh so we, we were out the cost of the tickets, um, uh, uh, meal expenses. Uh, typically, when you go on a business trip, you get the meal expenses. Uh, uh, we're out uh, pain and suffering. Um, I'm going to be mentally scarred from this for a long time now. Uh, so well, all together, yeah. what, for, 40 gold a person, right? Oh, well, that's a number. Right Double. Double. That sounds fair. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, I I agree. Dealing with what you had to deal with, I think we can. Uh, the liar guard can. Uh, yes, we can pitch in enough and, and make sure you get covered with the uh, forty gold that you need a piece. You you can keep you can keep mine. Just if I can get a contract with the liar guard. <laughs> you don't contract want the contract do work like uh, no, no, cleaning no, up the no, streets no, no. where wanna, we cannot. I want to be your vendor for food and, <laughs> and catering what? used to be food services <laughs> what kind of food are we talking about Muffins, here muffins baked goods anything that you know old scratch well, can make up from scratch we got we we kind of got a muffin guy already but <laughs> not like him you don't do you know the muffin man? <laughs> you vouch for this Sorry. man's muffin. Is that your mom again? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think what this means is we have some paperwork to fill out in the morning uh, as this job seemed to be bigger than what we had first thought. Uh, and during that paperwork, yeah, we can work something out. Contracts to be the muffin man of Bardsgate. We'll make it happen. I would... I, I, it, it's as good as done. And we're taking the horns. Uh, yeah, you can take the horns and the ashes and all of that. Uh, it is yours. I There's also like a million it. cultists behind the motley right now, just so you. Like, yeah, we we kind of we kind of figured that out, uh, and we have guards heading that way um, to take care of that cleanup. You guys, your your contractual obligation is done. Uh, and it, I think it is time that like, you you deserve everything, and we we are in uh, debt to you. We will make sure that you are taken care of. 
I think with that, we will uh, conclude this tale of Bard's Gate, the riot. Yay! Uh, yeah, Lyra's out. She's like, I'm done. She's like, fuck Lyra's this, like, guys. Like, I'm I, done. You set my contract. The contractual obligations are done. I'm done. So, um, so, yeah, thanks, guys, for uh, uh, playing with me uh, as your... Um, <laughs> Your, your mediocre DM. Uh, no, you were awesome. I that enjoyed was great. it. That was good. Yeah. Uh, False humility. That's I know. How great he is. I'm actually very full of myself. I know That's I did. Mood. Uh, but no, thank you guys for uh, playing. And on a Monday, we went a little long than I think what these normally will try to shoot for, but that's okay. Uh, we had fun uh, and we got to the end of the story. So yeah. there we are. Um, any any parting words by yeah, anybody? So before uh, we go, I want to say the thirteenth is the a couple Mondays from now is when we're going to do the next one shot. Um, if anybody's interested, and I think we're spots are full for this. You can always join our Discord. There's some application stuff you can fill out to join us, and maybe you might get it. Maybe maybe it's a big maybe. So don't think it's going to happen. You could get a shot up here with us. So. <laughs> Um, well, I just I don't want to get people's expectations up and then they get all upset if they can't play with us. So under promise, over deliver. Exactly. Um, so if you want, join our Discord and we can talk about it. So the next is going to be five thirteen. It is going to be an all Kenku game, and it's going to be amazing. You know what that means? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're just gonna sit there and mock each other the entire time yeah (laughs) we are all mockingbirds thanks to Brittany for playing with us yes Yes. so good yes so good I'll yeah. stop, but thank you. <laughs> that false humility again. <laughs> yeah, it was tons of fun, uh, Brittany, having you on and, and hanging out with us. Um, every, uh, good Definitely. job, everybody. I, I had a good time. Um, uh, catch us Thursday for the podcast and Friday for Waterdeep. Yes, indeed. Yeah. That's it. That's how we roll. Bye, guys. Uh, thank you, guys. We'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.